All right, good morning. Good morning. How many of you have ever been to the Shiloh Museum before? So here in Springdale. And I don't know if you realize this, but the Shiloh Museum is your museum. It's actually a department of the city of Springdale. So this is a museum that you guys can go to anytime when we're open for free. You can explore the museum. I know that you guys are talking about kind of exploring some different topics in history. Well, the Shiloh Museum, what we're going to focus on is the history of this area. We tell the history of the Ozarks. So what are the, what are the Ozarks? Anybody have a... Yeah, what are the Ozarks? The Ozark Mountains? Yeah, the Ozark Mountains. And where are the Ozark Mountains? Are we in the Ozark Mountains? Yes. We are in the Ozark Mountains right now. So the Ozarks are in the northwestern area of Arkansas. And I'll give you a little bit of trivia. The Ozark Mountains aren't actually mountains. They're plateaus. So plateaus is when it, it comes to a flat top rather than coming to a peak. All right, so these are the kind of things that you guys can find out at the Shiloh Museum. We talk about the history of the people who live specifically in this area. So as you guys are researching your topics, feel free to check out the museum. We have our website online, has a lot of online exhibits. So if you're researching and you want to find a topic that's a little bit close to home, feel free to check that out. So today what we're going to talk about is an introduction to Native American history in Northwest Arkansas, so in the Ozarks. So does anybody know which Native American tribes lived in this area? The Osage, yes. The cattle were a little bit south of here. They were in Arkansas. So the Osage is one that we're going to talk. One tribe we're going to talk a lot about today. And what? Another tribe that lived here a little bit later than the Osage. The Quapaw is also in Arkansas, but not in not in this area specifically. We're doing great. So there's, a, there's another one that I'm thinking of. So, um, the not, not the Nez Pierce, but I like where, where y'all are going. So this is a tribe that wasn't here originally. They moved to Arkansas from places like Tennessee and Georgia. Right on what we, we call now the Trail of Tears. Oh. Ring any bells? Yep. Yeah. All right, so which Native American tribe was that? American. All right, I heard somebody say the Cherokee. So we're going to talk today about the Osage and the Cherokee. And one big difference that we're going to kind of focus on is prehistoric versus historic. So the Osage tribe was prehistoric, and the Cherokee are his, a historic Native American group. So when we talk about really what does historic mean, any guesses on when we talk about historic, what do you think of that that we're talking about? Any, any guesses? Any ideas? How do you guys learn about history? How's the word history in it? How do you guys, if you want to find out something about what happened in the past, how do you do that? You can Google it. All right. So we can Google it. We can try to find out. And what is when you Google it? What's gonna What's gonna come up? Some answers. And how are you gonna know what that answer is? What are you going to do? You're gonna write it down. All right. You're gonna read it. You're gonna write it down. So when we talk about people being historic, that means that they have a written language. Okay. So when we talk about the Osage being prehistoric, what do you think that's going to signify? What do you What do you know that we're going to talk about if they're prehistoric? Okay. So sometimes the the prehistoric groups are older. Absolutely. And specifically, what are they not going to have? We talked about how historic is having a written language. They don't have a written language. Their language isn't written down. So if your language wasn't written down, how would you know his the history? Your history. If you wanted to know what happened to your family in the past, but you didn't have a way to write it down or read it, how are you going to find that out? 
you going to do? From the items left behind. Yeah, from the items left behind. All right, so you can do archaeology, and we're going to do a little bit of that today. We're going to look at some things that are very typical of the items that we would find um, at an Osage settlement. All right, and what else could you do? Let's say that I want to find out about my great-great-grandmother, but there's nothing written down about her. Ask my family. Ask my family, yeah. So there's an oral tradition with prehistoric tribes. Their stories are passed down from generation to generation. All right, so that's one way that the stories are preserved. And the other way is through objects. All right, so you guys are going to be a little bit of detectives today. And I noticed some of you saw my, my treasure chest that I walked in with. So what we're going to do is look at some prehistoric objects. I want you to see if you can figure out what these were used for. So do we want to start with a hard, a hard one or an easy one? Easy. Hard one. Easy. Hard one. Hard one. Easy. Hard one. I think the easies are vaguely hard. 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 We'll, we'll start with an easy one to get a little bit of a warm up. For <laughs> baby. For baby. That's a rattle. It's a rattle. It's called a rattle. It's a rattle. Right, I'm gonna come all the way around so that everybody can see it. It's a rattle. Chicken. Chicken. It's a rattle. All right. So I heard a lot of people guessing what this was. This is a rattle. All right, so this would be the prehistoric equivalent of something like a tambourine or a maraca, some kind of musical instrument. But what is this? Any guesses? We know it. We know what it does. But what is it? It's not a rattlesnake tail. It does kind of make that noise. So yeah, that's what it's used for. It's an instrument. But what was it originally? Because it wasn't always an instrument. Oh, oh. yeah, here we go. So what is making the rattling noise? Snakes. Seeds. Seeds. Exactly. There's there's no hole here. It's just a dried out gourd, but it was used as a rattle. It's a gourd. All right, so we're going to do a hard one this time. And I'm going to come around as much as I can so everybody can kind of see it. So um, when you see the object, go ahead and stay quiet so everybody has a chance to see it before we make some, some guesses. Anybody guess what this is? I have 
has the, it's pressured down, like in the middle kind of Okay, so the middle is pressed down a little bit. Anything else that you want to? Looks like an order. Okay, so it's got kind of a texture to it. What is the what is the texture? What does it feel like? Ow. Okay, so it's a little bit rough. Is it really rough? No. No. So do you think that that would have been how? The rock always was. Do you think it always felt that way? No. No, okay, so it's been kind of smoothed down a little bit. All right, anything else? Or are you good? You good? Okay. All right. So your classmate has helped you out a little bit. What do we think that this is? This is it a smush stuff? I said this. It's not a spoon. I like that what you guys are thinking. It does kind of scoop out a little bit. It's not 
it's not designed for skipping stone, although it probably would skip really well. It's kind of flat on top. Alright, so we've had two people say that it might be something that you could skin fish scales with. You could probably use it for that. Um, that wasn't probably the primary, because it would probably have something really sharp to, to do that. But y'all are on the right track. To cut To kill. To kill. It's not just a knife, though. It has a very specific... Alright, so I'll show you guys a knife in a little bit. Not a weapon. Alright, y'all are, are getting really close to the right, the right thing. So if we're not scraping fish, it's a scraper for animal skin. I said the shit is good. Peel. Like leather, like deer. That's what I just said. Okay, alright. Yeah, so this would be used for scraping deer skin things. What I want to show you guys. Alright, so this is our knife. So we've got our knife, our shovel, and our scraper. What do you guys notice all different about the knife? Okay, so it's smaller than the shovel. It's considerably smaller. Alright. Somebody who has an answer. That's a knife. Yeah. What's different about my, my knife versus the other tools that you've seen that kind of have the same purpose? A similar purpose. A hero. It's pointy. See how the shovel is kind of rounded at the top? It's not going to have quite as much of a point. And our knife is a little bit dull now, so that this way I can hold it. It would be very sharp normally. Alright. And then let's see. So another difference on the knife is that it's got some worn down places so that you can hold it like this. And one side's a little bit sharper than the other, so that way I wouldn't cut myself while I was holding it. Alright. So why, why am I showing you guys so many rocks? So that they, so that everybody else knows what you're looking at. It's black. Okay, so it's black. <laughs> no, that's an observation. How does it feel? You notice something about the edges. Can you describe the edges for the rest of the class? They're uneven. They're uneven. Okay. And it's. <laughs> so it's bigger than our scraper. My edges are kind of uneven. But what do you know? What else do you notice? 
curious about the edges. Is this how the rock would have looked coming out of the ground? No. no. So what shape have they given to this rock? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a, a rounded rectangle. Ow. I'll give you guys a hint on this one. It's missing a piece. Ooh, look at the foot. Is it steel? Yeah, it's steel. It's just a little axe. Oh, exactly. Wow. This is an axe. There would have been a handle. Oh, axe. It would have been uh, secured probably with sinew, kind of some strips of, kind of deer hide that would secure this to it. But this is an axe. Alright, and I told you guys that I would show you the grinding tool. Alright, this is your grinding stone. So while I walk around with this one, do you guys have any questions for me? Is it a plate? 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 Lay in a K-N-A-P-P-I-N-G. And what you have to do is you have to really carefully chip away small flakes of the rock. You use a special kind of rock that, that flakes really easily, but it's still really difficult. You have to be careful not to, to flake off extra pieces. So these, the ones that I'm showing you guys, because um, these are not ones that we found in this area for the Osage, but they're ones that we know that they had very similar tools. Why do you think that I'm not showing you guys the, the artifacts that were found in this area? Because they're old. Yeah, yeah so they're at the museum. They're preserved a little bit better. So these are kind of duplicates, ones that a lot of times people will just find stuff, and they don't know what it is, and they don't record where they found it. And so there's not really much of a history on it. So that's the kind of stuff that we're able to show you guys and handle. So that way we're not damaging the ones that we do know the history for so that we can preserve those. Yes. What's a gourd? A gourd? Yeah. So a gourd is a kind of it's a squash. So it's a, a vegetable. But yeah, and then when it kind of dries out, um, you can use it kind of hollow so you can use it for a rattle there. You can actually use them for um, bird houses and drinking out of it too. All right. Any other questions? Come in. Another question. Does that thing that you showed us to cut wood still work today? Um, the the axe. It might if you sharpened it. All right. So ours is all of our tools are pretty dull, but you could use that process of napping to actually flake off more um, and make it sharp again. Wouldn't you also make an arrowhead by putting certain rocks in hot, hot water and having it make a way? Um, I, I have never seen that done. It might, it very well might be. Um, oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know that, that some rocks will, if they, they get really hot with, with water, they can kind of explode, so that, that makes sense. I've never done it, but that, that does make sense. Oh, okay. I don't know the exact age on this one. These would probably be from um, kind of the Woodland time period. So this is around the um, kind of 1500s, around that in this area. So. <laughs> All right, so I think that we are out of time, but thank you guys so much, and as you're researching, make sure to check out the museum for kind of some, maybe some ideas on those your topics. Thank you.